I think we need to talk about Project Slayers. Now, I will get into what the elephant in the room of Project Slayers is, the big problem Project Slayers has as a game, but I do want to quickly speak about Project Slayers as a whole. Now, Project Slayers is actually a good game. I'm not gonna lie, Project Slayers PvE is really engaging. Uh, from level 1 to about level 15, 20, which is basically the whole game, honestly, content is an issue. It's not like an, a major issue, but content is, is a big issue with this game. <laughs> After level 15, level 20, you've basically completed the game. That is a big issue because the level cap is 100. Why is there so much space in between what you can do in the game? Anyways, sorry, off topic. The PvE is actually really good. I won't lie to you. It's enjoyable. The bosses are actually farmable. You can like, you can actually fight bosses. It's not like Grand Peace Online where you're starting off and if you want to fight a boss, you kind of need a squad of five or six people in order to take a boss on successfully, especially at the beginning of the game. Um, you don't really need to spam moves in order to beat bosses. You can actually M1 and have a back and forth with the bosses. It feels like you're actually playing the game. The PvE is enjoyable. And that's a good thing. It's not too tedious. It allows you to actually take the game in. And it's not just a, a farm fest. You don't just have to farm this NPC a million times. I mean, you do. It still has banner beer elements, but it's not to the same extent of other games because the PvE is actually somewhat engaging. And that's honestly about it I could say about the game. The PvE is engaging. Now, if we go to the other side of the spectrum, we have the pay to win elements. Though that I do think the devs have actually kind of tried to balance and even out, especially with the clans. Uh, they've been giving out a bunch of codes and if you watched my video showing you guys how to stack codes on your account and your alt accounts, you should have a bunch of spins on multiple accounts. That way, so when new clans and new demon arts come out, you don't have to spin off your Kamado. You have one Kamado, I got Suma slot right now. I'm gonna assume most of you guys do at least. Uh, you don't have the Robux in order to spin off of it and you got a code, you only have about 50 spins. Why risk your Agatsuma Komodo where you can just go on your old account and spin Rengoku or spin whatever the new demon art is instead of risking your main account, which is the whole purpose of having multiple spins on all accounts. I did hear a lot of people complaining, okay, that's cool, but how do I get it on my main account? Well, if you don't have multiple slots, you're not going to want to roll off your Komodo on your main account, will you? But yeah, they've tried to even everything out with giving us multiple ways to get clans and spins and even items with the wheel. The wheel is actually pretty underrated. I have gotten the insect breathing sword. I, I was surprised. I didn't think you could get like really rare items. I'm pretty sure you're able to roll ores on the wheel spin as well. So you know what? They've tried to balance out the pay to win features. However, it doesn't take away from the game passes. Uduraki's wow. mask is literally the best mask in the game. And there are a bunch of other game passes that really do give you competitive edge over the rest of the people playing the game. But that isn't even the biggest issue. The biggest issue, the elephant in the room for Project Slayers is the PvP. Now you might be thinking, Ags, yes, the PvP is bad, but is it that bad? And the reason I say it's that bad is because... <laughs> issue the reason why pvp being bad is such a big issue is because the game lacks content without a playable pvp system after you get to about level 20 level 15 you've completed everything you have to do let's say you're slayer level 15 you enter the slayer exams and bow you're out by the time you're out you're probably level 16 17 18 19 or even 20 and before you go to slay exams, you're most likely going to want to get your breathing. Uh, so let's say you farmed a boss and got your final breathing move. Or even if you didn't, it doesn't really matter. You have farmed, you've gotten your breathing, and you've become a slayer. What do you really do after that? With no fun and engaging PvP system, you're not really going to want to play ranked. You've seen other people play ranked. You've 
contested PvP with your friends whilst leveling up, it's an infinite combo simulator. Whoever gets the first hit typically tends to win the match, especially if you have Kamado or Agatsuma with Thunder or Tomioko with Indomitable Will, you literally have that extra combo extender and it just, it literally 100 to zeros you. It's literally the person who gets the first hit wins the fight. So imagine two level 100s going at it. It won't really make much of a difference. It's just going to be whoever gets the first hit wins. You have no real incentive to level up past level 20, especially if you know the PvP is bad, which means the game lacks a lot of content, especially if you have no real reason to want to go to PvP arenas after you've reached a decent level or even max level. You're just going to stop playing at that point. Now moving on to PvP in its entirety, it's pretty bad. Thunder is the dominator of the whole PvP scene in my opinion. If you get hit with Thunder, the stuns on it are so crazy, <laughs> literally. And with Thunder clapping Flash, it literally stretches you almost halfway across the map. So you're going to reach your opponent. There are times you misjudge it and you might not hit your opponent. But 90% of the time, if you use Thunder Clap and Flash, you've hit them, you've dealt your initial damage, they get stunned, which means you're able to pull off another M1 combo. Then you're able to use another move that will extend that. And then let's say you have Kamado. You use an Indomitable Will that extends that. And then you can use another lightning move that extends that. Sixfold. And there's a whole bunch of other Thunder moves on there that extend too. So it really just leaves you vulnerable. It takes you from 100 to 0 fast as hell. There are other breathings that do literally the same thing. Take you 100 to 0. But I think Thunder is probably the best example. Not to mention if you have Agatsuma, your Thunder damage. Your damage with Thunder breathing is, is I don't think it's doubled. But you deal more damage with it. You move way faster with it. And you have the TP dashes so you can gap close really easily. On top of you having gap closing and abilities that stun your opponent for 50 years as well. It is genuinely an issue. And it's not just Thunder that's an issue with, it's almost every breathing. The blood demon arts that dominate the scene, Nezuko's blood demon art, Reaper, and Arrow. Now, I'm pretty sure the volleyball one, I forgot the name for it, sorry, is actually really good too, but I know those three are crazy. Nezuko's blood e demon art has literally no wind up time. You can use it and it instantly cast. Now, it's not a bad thing necessarily. It shouldn't be a crazy wind up time that wouldn't really balance it. It would just make it worse in terms of making Nezuko's Blood Demon Art trash and people just won't use it anymore. But Nezuko's Blood Demon Art moves, they just don't have any wind up time. It's instant cast and you can combo extend really easily with it. Same goes for Reaper. Now, I haven't personally used Reaper, but I've been obliterated by a reaper using and i mean i wasn't even able to move i was not able to move you can't keep track of them because i think one of their moves literally makes them disappear <laughs> i'm not gonna lie it's pretty crazy but reaper is really good and i know the arrow blood demon art you can literally bully people from across the map with it i think it's really cool i ain't gonna lie the the arrow demon art's really cool i will not lie but again something needs to be done about the pvp it is completely unbalanced and it's not really the funnest thing to do and it makes the game lack that initial form of content there's nothing to do after you've progressed within the main game I have no reason to want to go into arena and fight people. So yeah, PvP is a big issue in Project Slayers. Doesn't really take away from the game. It's still a really good game, but this issue is an issue. And I just thought I'll talk about it. Anyways, see you guys later.